Well, we have OTAs coming up this week. Steelers will get at it on Tuesday. And it's interesting, Chris Adamski, uh, you're over there a lot just like Jeff, Jeff is every single day. Okay, I'm rub it in that I'm not there, Bob. Well, I'm not there either. We have different kinds of jobs. We go there sometimes, not all the times, but these guys are there every day. The, the question I have for you is that we're going to see some sort of depth chart. We're going to see somebody be on the field ahead of somebody else. When it comes to two positions I'm interested in, left tackle, is it going to be Dan Moore because he's a veteran? It may not mean much, but he's going to be the guy first up, or will it be Broderick Jones? We'll start there. Yeah, I think for the first, this is OTAs. There isn't much you can take from it. Tra the first day of training camp, that's when I think the first chance is. I would be surprised if they unseat the veteran. He's a two-year starter. We can say what we want about Dan Moore. We can say he's still young, whatever. He's been starting the last two years. He's the incumbent. I, I have the opinion he's not as bad as most people say he is. He's worthy of being replaced. He's not as good as Broderick Jones, certainly of the long term. But I think for the first day of OTAs, I think it'd be, I'd be shocked if Broderick Jones is whatever we see in football and shorts in the first day of OTAs, the, the first team left tackle. Yeah, be, that would be a big message. No. The toughest thing is going to be not spilling the beans to him and the stuff we're not allowed to say. That's going to be the <laughs> hardest thing. Now, I, I think first day of OTAs, yeah. you'll see Dan Moore. Yeah. But I think the first game of the season, you're going to see Broderick yeah. Jones. I, I, I hope it's Jones, and I think it will be. I think it should be. You're, you're, let's not reward a guy just because of his experience. He gave up seven sacks last year. He's not a good left tackle. You drafted somebody in the first round. I think you send a strong message right off the bat. Hey, it's your job. What did they say when they drafted him? He's got a huge ceiling, but he's good enough to play right now. All right, show us that. I just don't, you know, I think the first day of Latrobe is when we'll see that. I, I don't see the value much at this point. At least make the kid think he maybe has to, even mini camp. to show something. Maybe mini camp yeah, yeah, maybe by then. Mini camp, but, yeah, but I don't think first day Tomlin wants Tuesday. to make him earn it regardless of his status. What about Joey Porter Jr.? Uh, is he a kind I, of guy who's going to be listed right off the bat? I don't know. I, I don't think right off the bat. It, the secondary to me is fascinating because yeah, yeah. there's so many different ways you can mm -hmm. you can put that secondary together. Fascinating. I'm scared to death thinking well, about it against the Bengals and teams you know, like that. Imagine if you're Minka, like the guy that was next to you for all those years with the Steelers is gone. Joe Hayden's gone for, in the last two years, and now Cam Sutton is gone, and you're reworking that whole deal and trying to communicate in a place where communication is key. I love the ad of Peterson. But they they got to figure out quickly. That's where OTAs and minicamp will be valuable. How those guys work together. Yeah, there's a lot of ways it can go, and I think they've sort of they've done this a lot. This has been sort of their strategy. You saw it in, an inside linebacker, uh, other positions to a point, uh, offensive line, interior offensive line. That they have options. If somebody, if Joey Porter Jr. proves it, shows he's not ready, maybe the first year needs needs some time. They have options. It, it, if like who? Shannon Sullivan could play oh the, the my slot and, and Levi. James Levi Pierre, Wallace. Are you going to go James yeah, I'm Pierre? I'm not down, Levi Wallace was actually I'm not down on Levi year. Wallace, but Shannon Sullivan was like the most targeted well, corner in the entire league last year. It, on the worst defense. It, 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 We're well, counting on this guy? They signed two two members of the secondary of the worst pass defense in the league in the Vikings. I, yeah, I, so I, so I, I don't understand know what that, that says. But, I didn't understand yeah. that. Let me ask you about the quarterback situation. Andrew, I think it's a really good situation to have three veterans like that. And I consider, obviously, pick at the starter. But these two guys behind him, a lot of people don't like it. A lot of people don't think it's valuable to have a guy like Mason Rudolph, who may never play. It's an insurance policy. And even Trubisky at the price tag, he got a re, you know, restructured yeah. deal and everything. But still, who else would you want back there? That's a pretty good room, isn't it? Well, I like the idea of doing something with Trubisky before free agency because you could have used that money to maybe bring in someone better than Chandon Sullivan as your nickel corner. But since we're past that point, yeah, it's okay. Because you've got a backup who's been to the playoffs twice, and you've got a third string guy who's started 10 games. And I like now that there's no, okay, who's the starter? Who gets the right. reps in training camp? How do you divvy up the, the, the snaps in the preseason? It's Kenny's job. And Trubisky and Rudolph come to the team knowing right. that they're there to help That's them. That's a big difference and a good one, I think. Right, and I saw a story, NFL – Dot com ranked the best quarterbacks in the league last year. They had Mitch 33rd, which Where tells you uh, 28th, I think. He'll it was. be in the top 10 by the end of the year. 33rd. So that means you have the job. best backup yeah, in the league right yeah. by, by that ranking. Yeah, you have the best backup that there is out there. And I, I think it's and they get along. I think that's huge. Yeah, and, and, yeah. and they've proven it that it's not just talk. They've actually done it with action. Yeah, I don't see how anybody can. I, I, they lowered his cap number this year. Like you said, it doesn't really help functionally at this point to have a lower cap number for 2023. But I don't see the angst some people have. Some people are angry about signing Mr. Bisky or signing Mason Rudolph. When you're signing a third string quarterback, I mean, people could say about what, what about Mason Rudolph, but he's number three in the depth chart. I mean, 
I don't know how you can do better than that. And Mitch Trubisky, at number two in the depth chart. Now, uh, if you want to say they're paying him too much, I, I, I... if I gave you this option, Bob, you can have no Mitch Trubisky. Mason Rudolph is the backup, and you could have taken that money and kept Cam Sutton. Would you have done that? I would have. Uh, I wouldn't have. Just really? I just think it's important to have the. That's the most important. But if you've got Sutton, Peterson, Porter, Wallace, I feel better about yeah, the entire. You would have needed a lot more deal. money and still Cam draft Sutton. Porter. Right, yeah. But, but, but All right, real but, quick, I have a minute left. I want to ask you about uh, Alex Highsmith. Does he get an extension? Will it happen this offseason? They'll talk. Um, I, I understand outside linebacker's most important position. I'd love to see them put a big contract on the offensive side. I mean, it's a fascinating conundrum because they, they draft. Conundrum? Yes, you like that. I like that, like that horse. That yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to spell it. I get spell check. Oh, for yeah, it. don't even ask me about spelling. Go ahead. <laughs> but you, you drafted a guy. I know it's the fourth round. It's the middle round. It's not a premium pick. But, but it's essentially, you drafted his replacement. Herbig. And, and Nick, Nick Herbig. I, I, I can't do the Herbig right. yet. Uh, so do, you gave yourself an insurance policy, but if you're going to extend him, you got to extend him now, right? You could wait till the spring, but it, the, the smart thing for many reasons to do it now. So that, that's sort of where they're at. I think they'll get it done because they like the, the person and like the, the guy. I think they'll do it because Pickett's on a rookie contract, and you can keep guys exactly. like this now because of that, Bob. And now, don't wait. When we come back, we're you not like spending. <laughs> to talk about the Penguins. What do they do with their GM? Has there been any movement? Who is the front runner? If there is one, we'll talk about it next right here on the number one Cochrane Sports Show.